day number three, Zion National Park. So uh, I'm not sure how well you can hear me. I had to put this in the enclosed case, but here's a hint. We've got sticks. Michelle, she's got a stick. And we have water shoes on. Yes, we're not just styling and profiling. Let me show you where we're at. That's right, folks. We're hiking the Narrows. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's Sunday, May 30th, 2021, and the place is jammed, packed, full of people. So uh, we rode the train, sorry, the shuttle bus from the visitor center. We only had to wait about 45 minutes, uh, which wasn't too bad. This morning I went over there to see how long the line was, and it was a couple hours long just to get on the uh, shuttle bus. So 45 minutes wasn't bad. We'll see how long it takes us to get back once we're done with this hike. We're not sure how far we're gonna go, but uh, we're gonna take you with us and show you some of the scenes. We'll see you in the water. I have no idea how deep this is, but I'm going to go in. I should say something when there's nobody in this section and they're all avoiding it, but uh, it's okay. Oh, right now it's only up to my knees. I'm slowly getting a little bit deeper, but uh, yeah, this is like somebody said on a video we were watching the other day, walking on wet bowling balls. Um, so we rented the equipment from Zion Outfitters right outside the main entrance. You can actually, if you're staying in the park, you can actually walk right off the side the main entrance and pick it up. Uh, it's $29 for the stick, some water socks, and the shoes for the day. And if you're going early in the morning, you can go pick it up the night before. Oop, I almost fell. <laughs> pick it up between 4 and 8 p.m. the previous day. So, uh, food for thought. Oh yeah, this is deep right here. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah, up to my chest, and it's really fast. Burn. shoulders. Michelle's over there. Look at her. She's taking the shortcut. I will say the bus driver was right. It gets more beautiful the further up the canyon you go. It also gets less busy. It was an absolute madhouse when we first got into the water and now it's starting to thin out because a lot of people don't have the energy to walk all the way up here through this because it's it's tiresome with the uh, you know having to stabilize yourself the entire time so I've already bitten it twice in this section <laughs> Oh boy, this is an adventure. Notice all the people walking up on the sides. That's not how I do it. Yeah, this will be fun. Look at this. get the camera to Michelle so she can videotape me trying to get up here. I've already bitten it twice. <laughs> I'm like almost completely under in my, in my head. I'll be careful.
That's how you do it. The bird is thinning out as we head back. I'll show you what we see. Good morning. So we are doing Navajo Loop Trail today and maybe sunset to sunrise. We haven't decided yet, but we just arrived here at the trailhead and wanted to turn around and show you guys the uh, image that we have come upon. Um, again, as you can guess, I forgot my GoPro, so um, we're going to be videotaping this on my phone the whole day. So here we go. Let me turn around. I think we got here at the perfect time. We got to the trailhead. Uh, we were able to find parking. So for a point of reference, today is June 3rd, 2021. And uh, we got to the parking lot around 7.30, 8 o'clock. And we were able to find a spot um, so that it worked out perfectly. We didn't have to ride the shuttle in from outside the park or from down at the visitor center. So uh, this is absolutely gorgeous around here. so odd is you know we started in all of those amazing rock formations and hoodoos I guess they're called and then we walk down a little bit further in the trail and we find almost in a little makeshift forest so uh, it is absolutely gorgeous here it is just so quiet um, and at least for today right now the crowds are 10,000 times better than they were when we were at Zion last week so uh, I've heard a lot of things about this park and usually what everyone tells me is that this by far is their favorite park um, of the of the big five in um, Utah. So so we are on the last segment of our hike. So we did the Navajo Loop to Queens Garden and up to sunset or sunrise point. Um, here's a, a quick view of our uh, current surroundings. This place is really like a postcard. It's pretty amazing. So, and uh, just to verify, Michelle is with me. Hi guys. <laughs> it's a great. It's a great hike. Beautiful. So we're heading back to the car. We're going to take a look at the map and see if there's some other spots we want to pull out at. Maybe scenic overlooks, or if there's another short trail or something. This one ended up being, I think, well, according to my GPS, about five miles. Um, even though the trail says only three, but we went down Wall Street instead of going down Navajo. So, all right. Thanks for joining us here in Bryce. You from Upper Inspiration Point. <laughs> Greetings. Today's adventure, mountain bike trip. We decided to bike from our camping site down probably about maybe a mile to the trailhead and we are doing the trail called Thunder Mountain. And it's, uh, it's pretty challenging to say the least. It's rated a black diamond, which by Utah standards probably means we probably are in for quite a butt whooping. Um, we're about, I'm guessing, maybe six miles into the total trip. It's going to be probably about 17 miles total. The last six or seven miles of it, though, is riding along a paved path back towards the uh, original trailhead that we started at. Um, they've got a real nice trail system here, a uh, paved trail system um, in the Red Rock Canyon. is a Red Canyon, I think it's called. And uh, 
leads over to Bryce. But yeah, I just wanted to, uh, we stopped to take a break. Just had a, quite a big hill to, to ride, even though we actually walked it. Wanted just to show you the overlook here that we're at. There's Michelle. Say hi to the camera, Michelle. So I've got the uh, GoPro mounted on the top of my helmet, so we're gonna have some action shots too to mix in. Um, at the end, well, near the end of the trail where we kind of go down onto the pavement, there's a uh, pretty exciting downhill from what uh, I've seen on trail, uh, trail forks. So uh, we'll definitely videotape that section. So, all right, we're gonna keep chugging along. All right, guys, we just stopped for lunch, but we saw off into the west a storm cloud, and I just saw a shot of lightning. So we decided to go ahead and get back on the trail and uh, get down off this mountain, especially since they call it Thunder Mountain. That can't be a good sign. It doesn't look like the rain's gonna last very long if, if in fact it rains, but funny fact is today is June 4th, and we have not been in rain since around March 10th when we were in New Orleans, Louisiana. That was literally the last time it dropped a rain, uh, a rain drop on us. So we've been really lucky. It's been super dry, but I'd be welcoming some rain, knock some of this dust down too. So we're gonna get down off this mountain Turns pretty steep, Michelle. Be careful. We met a couple guys up at the top of the mountain when we were taking a break. Small world. One of them was born in Indianapolis. This is crazy. Clear out here in the middle of Utah. We're running into all kinds of people from places we've lived or grew up but he said we got about two miles left according to his GPS okay you can see that dark cloud off into the horizon there I'm gonna try to beat beat it down So today's adventure from Bryce Canyon is the Mossy Cave Trail. And we may actually go up to another section. Uh, we'll see, this is a very short trail. Uh, I think to the Mossy Cave, it's about a half a mile. Um, but then there's an offshoot that you can also take. So we'll show you what we find.
So we made it to the mossy cave. Show you guys what it looks like. Pretty nice little hike up. Um, it's pretty much all uphill from the parking lot. Parking lot is extremely small. So if you get here, get here early or, to late, or later in the afternoon. Um, I'm guessing it only fits like maybe 15, 20 cars at most. We got lucky and there was somebody leaving when we pulled in. All right, we took that spur up to the top to see Mossy Cave. Now we're kind of doing the loop around to the top of the waterfall. see if I can get Michelle to go. So we're also taking the little hike over to the bottom of the bridge. Turns out, I'm sorry, bottom of the waterfall. Turns out we can't go up to the turrets, uh, the turret arch, because there's a big old sign there that says that is closed. So we don't want to go traipsing through when, uh, you know, clearly they don't want people hiking up there. Though I saw some photos the other day of somebody from our Instagram feed up there, so not sure what's going on. It's really pretty up here. There's a ton of different colored rocks right underneath the waterfall. I'm gonna go up there and uh, get a little closer shot for you guys. Hey, I'm not sure how much you're gonna be able to see or hear of this, but uh, I'll show you some of the beautiful rock formations behind it. So we're headed back to the uh, parking lot. One thing we just wanted to mention regarding the Mossy Cave Trail is that it's actually not inside the park. So you don't go through the main entrance. You actually have to go outside of town and it's about 10 to 15 miles kind of on the back side of the park. So if you're looking for the Mossy Cave Trail, you don't need to necessarily go through the, the, the visitor center and, and the front entrance of the uh, Bryce Canyon, you gotta go around it through um, State Route 12. Panguitch, Utah. Where is that? <laughs> Cowboy Smokehouse Cafe. Visiting with some friends from Indiana. It's a small, small world. <laughs> say hi, Eagle. <laughs> All right, you got anything to say? Hello. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. Good morning. Red Canyon. National Forest. So today's hike is a fairly short one, about two and a half miles, I think. 300 feet of elevation gain. Pink ledges to Eagle Eye and back. It's a big loop, so uh, it was like 10 minutes from our campsite. Today's our last day in the Bryce area, so we figured we come over and get one more hike in before we head over towards Cedar Breaks National Monument. So we'll show you what we see. We got here early, about 8.30, and there's nobody on the, uh, on the trail. Starting to see why they call it Pink Ledges. So there are numbers all along this trail. On those little posts identifying what types of trees they are, um, we forgot to pick up a little brochure from the uh, visitor center when we were there, but we found this and we've decided this is the snowman ball. Right here. <laughs> we've got a special treat for our fans. Get ready. The rest of this trail is all Michelle. 
I told her this time was coming. I told her it was going to be like next week or something, but I decided it's going to be right now. So the rest of this video is going to be all Michelle taking control of the GoPro. Enjoy, folks. Hey, everyone. Michelle here. Um, yeah, we're on the photo trail, and I can see why it's called the photo trail. Beautiful views of the mountainside here. Let me turn it around, and I'll show you. The color is amazing. And what's nice is only the trail in front of us. And since it's early in the morning, hardly anyone is out here walking. So while we've been here, um, staying near Bryce Canyon, we've been doing some geocaching. And I guess there's one along this trail that we're gonna keep an eye out for. So if we find it, we will be sure and share that with you. So I can't wait. So typically, I'm not in the lead in the hikes that we take. I have a horrible sense of direction, horrible. And uh, I've been known to get us on the wrong path a few times. But uh, Kyle usually leads. He's got the trail maps all on his watch. So I typically follow and I'm fine with that because for some reason he always seems to, to walk like he's in a race. Uh, for me, I like to enjoy the scenery as I walk and it's important that you look up and stop sometimes when you're walking on a trail because I can find myself just looking at Kyle's shoes instead of stopping and looking at the scenery around me. So, question to you guys is, do you typically lead when you are hiking with a group or with someone else, or do you typically follow? Comment down below and let us know. So, we've got about a mile left on the trail and I wanted to show you this rock formation that we're about ready to, to uh, walk past. Right there, I think I'm pointing to it. Kyle referred to it as a fin because you know he is a Jimmy Buffett fan. So, fins up. So, before I start walking down a little bit to the trailhead, which is where the geocache is, one thing that you have to be aware of if you start geocaching is be aware of mugglers. Mugglers are the people that are watching you, they see you kind of you know, looking around at stuff, lifting stuff up. It's almost like you're being sneaky about something. Well, they watch you and then they notice that you found something. And then when you leave, they could very well go take that geocache, which would completely ruin it for the next person. So we're gonna be on the lookout for mugglers. So we found the geocache. I'm gonna show it to you, but this is a very busy spot. Um, as you can see, cars are parked across the street and this is where they come over and hit the trail. Um, so I'm going to show it to you but we're just going to leave it here because we don't want any muggles just to, to watch us. We're going to pick up, we're going to pick it up probably on our way out uh, tomorrow and just sign the log and log that we found it. But uh, yeah, we see it. It's right here underneath this sign. So Michelle's going to show you. So here's where the trail kind of splits off. We're going to get ready to walk the last three quarter mile of this trail. Kyle's crossing the street right now, which is what we're going to have to do. And I'm going to follow him once the coast is clear. And then there's a paved path that we walk on back to where we parked. Hey, so we're at the end of our hike. And look at what we found! Smokey the Bear, our buddy! Only you can stop forest fires. 
So the trail was fantastic. By the way, I'm back. Hope you enjoyed Michelle's narration for the last however many minutes it ends up being on the YouTube video. So Give me a thumbs up for my performance. Yeah, comment below. What did you think? How'd she do? What can I do better? Any feedback? I'm open. If the feedback is just let Michelle do all the videos, hell, write that. So thanks, everyone.